Okay, so many of you were asking me how do I edit all my portrait work and I did tutorials about Luminar 4 and I did tutorials about Photoshop as well but I never took you through the whole process, the one I use for every single portrait work so today I'm gonna do it because the other day I was doing a photo shoot for Joanna and the pictures I freaking love them and I didn't touch them yet so I was editing them and I was thinking I'm gonna do a tutorial and take you guys through the whole process so follow along and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to improve those portraits as well so the first of what I use is Adobe Lightroom I would create a new catalog for every model or every project because if you use just one for everything it's gonna take forever to load with time when it's gonna be bigger so create one catalog for every model, every project, or every person you're gonna shoot with. Once Adobe Lightroom is open, I would go through all the pictures, and if you press five, you're gonna rate with five stars the pictures you really like. And if you press six, it's gonna put a red label on them. So this is how I personally do it, but then you can rate them how you want, and you can label them how you want as well, but this is how I do it. So here, as you can see, you have the pictures I already rated with five stars or with a red label. And here are the pictures I took to Joanna, and these are incredible. These are the raw files. I didn't touch them at all yet. So this one, for example, I'm gonna show you. If you press the letter I, you can see the metadata. And you can see here, they were taken with the 105 millimeters from Sigma, which is my favorite lens ever. Super heavy, but it's well worth it, guys. And you will see why. I'm gonna zoom in quite a lot. This is 200%. Look the quality of this. Look all the details of the skin, the hair, everything. It's insane. And that's why I love this lens, but you may hate it because it's gonna be way trickier to edit the skin properly because you really have to do it very, very good. So it looks good. And that's why I use Luminar 4. So I'm gonna come back at it, there you go, and you can see the raw file, the light is incredible already. So that's why I always try to get the picture perfectly exposed from the camera because then it's gonna be easier to edit it. So we're gonna edit this one first, for example. These are my presets, I always have them here. You can find them on my website. There is a pack and then one by itself that you can check, but then I'm gonna use one that is not on sale. I don't even know if I'm gonna put it on sale because I love it so much and it's a signature of my work. For my artist press shots, so let's see, it's called Piedra Roja, which means red stone in Spanish. And it's this one. As you see, this is the before and this is the after. And this looks super cool already. But you see, it modifies a bit the color of the hair. So you can always change presets. Every preset you buy from any photographer, mine, whoever, you can always tweak things in Lightroom to adapt it to your pictures. So on my packets, I include a tutorial to make sure you can do it and you learn how to do it. So I would go here because I know I had to change this and the red primary, I'm gonna put it on zero and look the hair. It's already pink because before it was red. You see before and after. And it's very desaturated, but I love the pictures this way. So I'm gonna leave it this way. Then I can put it maybe a bit warmer because it's a bit cold, just tiny bit, a bit more of exposure, tiny bit as well, just there. I'm gonna put it bigger for you to see. So this is a trick I always do. I mean, look, the quality is insane. <laughs> this is a trick I always do. When you edit portrait photography and if you have Lightroom, the texture is gonna always soften the skin. So I would put it minus 15 or something like that no more because otherwise it's too fake. I'm gonna overdo it so you can see how it looks like. Look at the skin, but it doesn't look real. So never do this, <laughs> please. <laughs> Let's put it in uh, minus 15. And then clarity as well. Go low, but not too much because it's gonna be fake otherwise. So I would put as well minus 15. And this is gonna soften a bit the pores of the skin already. And it's prepared to be launched in Luminar 4, which is what I do after this. So this is the before. And this is the after with the preset, which is more moody and more like matte effect. And then if you go here, you go to edit in Luminar 4. Edit, there you go. So guys, Luminar 4, you can use it like this as a plugin like I do, 
but if you don't have Adobe, you can have just Luminar 4. And guys, when I started my channel, I didn't have subscribers at all. And I reached out to Luminar 4 because I love this software for many years. And they were super nice to give me an affiliate link and super, super nice to give me a discount link for you guys because normally nobody does this if you don't have subscribers. So I always offer a discount below. So check it out because you have one link to try it for free and another one to take the discount. So make sure you try it for free and you like it to come back to the video and grab it through the link because otherwise it's gonna be, I think like $20 more expensive or something like that. So make sure you try it and you like it to come back to that discount link. And this being said, let's go again here. And I'll show you, you have Luminar looks and this comes with the software, all of these. So here we're gonna focus in portrait. This is the one I use the most. And here you have a lot of LUTs already pre-installed. This one is very nice and you don't have to do anything. Then you can change as well the opacity if you want. You can do a lot of stuff with this, but I'm not gonna get into depth unless you ask me, guys. I can do a full tutorial about Luminar 4 because it has so many things. And it works as a standalone software as well and it's no subscription. So this is a very good, good point. I have everything, Adobe Luminar 4. <laughs> so this one is the one I use for every single port, right? AI Face Enhancer. I'm gonna zoom in. So you're gonna see what it does. This is the before. Put attention on the skin and in the face. This is the before and this is the after. Before, after. It fixes the skin automatically by AI and it makes the face a bit thinner. But you can change this because I actually don't like to modify the face of anyone. Sometimes if you have a model which is a bit chubby or you wanna modify a little bit, not too much, please, you can do it. So you would go here to this section, to this face, and you have here AI Portrait Enhancer. And you have a lot of tools here which are incredible because you don't have to mask in Photoshop. So this, you save a lot of time. That's why I bought this software time ago. And this is the face light. You will see the face. It gives light to the face only. So by AI, it detects where the face is and it gives light just to that part of the face, of the portrait. You don't have to go in Photoshop and mask anything. It does it by itself. So I'm gonna put just a tiny bit, not much, because it was very well lit already. Then I'm not gonna go through this because it's very obvious. Eye whitening, eye enhancer. I'm not gonna even read it. A slim face, you can do more. So I'm just gonna show you. It really detects the face and make it thinner before and after and before. So I'm not gonna touch it, but it's just for you to see how it detects the face. Then enlarge eyes the same, you can make them bigger or leave them like they are. I'm gonna leave them like they are. Improve eyebrows, I'm gonna remove. All of this I'm gonna remove. But you can play with this because it's amazing. You can improve a lot of portraits, but I love this portrait like it is. She's beautiful, I don't need to touch her at all. And then if you go here, this is what I really love. AI Skin Enhancer. So this is the skin. This is gonna read us the skin perfectly. So you will see it in 65. I'm gonna push it a lot for you to see. This is the before. Look the skin and after. It's incredible. Guys, time ago in Photoshop, I used to take hours to retouch the skin like this. I used to do it because I didn't have Luminar 4, but then when I had a lot of workload going on, I didn't have the time to retouch all the portraits like this. So I bought Luminar 4 and with this I save a lot of time, but never do it with 100. As I always tell you, don't overdo things. So I never go over 60. Then if I have to fix a bit further, I do it in Photoshop, but I will do 60. And then I really like as well working with flash uh, shine removal. Focus your attention here where the white parts are. If I push it, there you go, before and after. It reduces the shiny part of the face. So you have a model with shiny skin or the flash is too harsh and you cannot fix it in Lightroom, with Luminar 4 you can do it. I'm not gonna overdo it, but I'm gonna do it a bit to remove a bit the shiny part, maybe 30. And this is the before, I'm gonna show you with this tool because I love this tool, before and after. It's incredible, guys, and it's in a few clicks. So for me, this is a lifesaver before and after. And I'm happy with this. I'm not gonna touch it more, apply. And this is the picture already edited with Luminar 4 and it's almost perfect. So this was super quick. In Lightroom, I would apply the preset, 
the color grading, everything I want to change, and the light corrections. And then I go to Luminar 4 to edit by AI the skin and the features of the face. And then the last step, I would go here, right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Edit. So here we have already the picture in Photoshop. And what I would do in Photoshop is to retouch those bits of the skin that weren't perfect and I didn't retouch Illuminar 4. Even though Illuminar 4, you can retouch as well. I do have tutorial about this. You can as well remove and clone stamp defects of the skin, but I always do it in Photoshop because I'm used to it. So let's zoom in in the face and she has a beautiful skin already. It doesn't have too much going on. But for example, here, the paint or things like this, I would take the healing brush and I will remove these bits, you see? And I always work with a graphic tablet. There is no way I could do this with the mouse. I'm gonna link it down below the one I'm using, but it's like painting, so it's super good to use a graphic tablet. I really recommend you to do that because it's way quicker, it's super nice, and to be honest, I find it therapeutic as well. <laughs> I love editing. So this I'm gonna remove, these little wrinkles here. I mean, she has an amazing skin, so I'm very lucky with her because I don't have to fix anything. If you go to my skin, when I do self-portrait, it's not so good. <laughs> but she has an amazing skin already, it's almost perfect. Then you can remove this paint. For this one, you can use the pad tool. And I explained this in the tutorial I told you about. You would select this, and then you would move a bit. There you go. Disappear, it's not there anymore. <laughs> So this is the way I use Photoshop after Lightroom and after Luminar. I always change between tools because some tools are better than others for some stuff. And this would be the picture, guys, and it was super easy to do and is perfect. Then maybe I would fix, I'm not gonna get too much into it, but I will remove this scar, for example. Let's do it, actually. Let's go here to the path tool. You go here, you select, and you just have to move to a side and it disappeared. It's so easy to reach as a stuff with Photoshop. I love it. So as I told you, I have a tutorial I'm gonna link below about how to use these tools I always use for portrait work. And let's read that another picture for you to see. Let's go here. For example, I'm gonna show you this picture because I love it. This, guys, is the kind of pictures I love to do. This picture is creative, is weird, and for me, it's like an album cover. And I love shooting with artists, and this is my style completely. I don't like, um, I like beauty shots and I like model shots, but for me are more normal. So that's why I like to be creative and do weird stuff. So let's edit this one because this one is incredible. This picture, she was like bending towards the floor, but it actually rotated in Lightroom because I'm gonna post it like this in horizontal. But in theory it was vertical because she was upside down, but I like to do creative stuff. So I did it this way. So let's apply the Piedra Roja preset I have here which is super moody, I love it. And don't worry, it's quite dark, but that's why I'm gonna show you how to fix these things. Exposure, I'm gonna put a little bit. Then I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the hair because it's a bit too red, so I'm gonna leave it pink. There you go. I'm gonna put it a bit warmer, just a tiny bit because it's too cold. You can do whatever in Lightroom, it's incredible. There. And then this is a tool I always use. to just give light wherever I want in the picture. So this gives light just to the face, and you can see a bit more the eye. And then I would paint the hair. If you want the hair with a bit more texture, you can paint just the hair, and it gives a bit more light, or whatever you want to do with it. So here, you see the highlights are 37, that's why it gives light, but then you can move everything. And then clarity, you see what it does. See the texture of the hair? Less or more? So you can put a bit, like 30 I'm gonna put. Highlights a bit less. And then you can even go closer and do another radial. Just for the makeup, to saturate it so it stands out. This I'm gonna put it in zero. And then here in clarity, I'm gonna put a bit and saturation, so the makeup stands out a bit more. And I'm gonna leave the shadows as well. You see? 
it's already way better. I'm gonna put it like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. Remove the texture, minus 15, 16, and minus 16. And this is already incredible, this is the before, and this is the after. Guys, you really need to learn how to edit because the editing process, as you saw, the original was good because the creative side is already there and the lighting is already there, but then when you edit it, the picture can improve a lot. So please learn to edit. And Luminar 4, if you do portrait photography, I highly recommend you to take it because it's super, super cheap and affordable and you don't have to pay subscription. You can check it out or try it for free. I don't care. I'm sure you're gonna love it. But guys, if you do portrait photography, Luminar 4 is incredible for this. So this is how it is right now. Before Luminar 4, and now I'm gonna open Luminar 4. Luminar 4, edit. And here I would do the same. I would take AI Face Enhancer, because by default apply the tools I want to use, but then I modify it by myself, which is going here to the portrait section. I go here, I don't give light, I remove everything unless I want to do it. But it's super good everything you can do here. So I'm gonna go to AI Skin Enhancer, I'm gonna zoom in. The skin is way better. So I'm gonna leave it in 65 because I really like it like this. And apply. So now because I'm done with Lightroom and Luminar 4, I would finish it up again in Photoshop and I'll show you what I do here. So you can see, for example, this bend in. So with the liquify tool, I can fix a bit the back. So it's fine, but I'm gonna correct it a bit. With the lace tool, you grab a bit of the picture. You go filter, liquify. With the first tool, you would push a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, because otherwise it's not natural. That's it. This is the before and the after. So it's still bending, but it's not that much. So this kind of corrections is gonna improve the picture a lot, and it's just a tiny bit. And here, for example, you can see I mean, she was amazing posing, and for this pose, because she was upside down, the blood was in her head, so you can see the vein here. But this we can correct with the parts tool, or maybe with the clone stamp. Let's check. With the parts tool, you go like this, and you select it, and you move a bit. Yeah, not too bad. So you can see there is a mark here and here as well. But for this, I use the healing brush. So for small details, I like the spot healing brush. I'm gonna put a bit bigger the size, maybe like that. And you just have to go like this. And it's way better already. Then again, I'm gonna use the pads here. Different tools for different things all the time. So for this part, which is a bit bigger, there you go, here I see, Ta -da. there you go. So this is already better, this is the before, you see that shadow, and the after. And this is the final picture. I would keep correcting things, I, this is obviously a tutorial, so I'm not gonna be one hour, but normally I take one hour, because I'm very picky, so I would correct maybe more the skin, I would correct a bit better that vein, because you cannot see it anymore, but I would carry on doing stuff over there. But this is for you to see everything you can do to your portraits to improve them. So Lightroom, I would use for presets, color grading, and light correction. Then Luminar for forest skin and features. And then I finish Photoshop for the things I just told you. And this is my process, guys. And it looks like a lot, but as you saw, I did it quite quick. Normally, I take longer because I really like to edit pictures, and I take longer. But you can do it quick. And if you have Adobe and you have presets, it's gonna save your life a lot because you're gonna edit way quicker. And even if you don't have Adobe, I would recommend you Luminar 4, is the one I use. And I know it works perfectly as a standalone software. And if you don't have any of those and you have another one, then I don't know. There is Affinity, which is very recommended as well. People love it, but I never tried it. So I cannot recommend it because I don't know how it is. I did hear good things about it. But the ones I use, is these two and you saw they work amazingly for my portrait work and all the work I do. If you want a full tutorial about Luminar 4, let me know because there is so many things going on with that software. Um, yeah, like the video because everyone forgets and for me it helps me a lot to be discoverable on YouTube and subscribe to my channel if you didn't yet and I will see you very soon.